Call 1-800-983-SONY. Get four issues, eight CDs for only $29.95. Get it today. Sorrel. I'm producer of Medieval. Um, I've also been involved in design from the start and quite a bit of the programming as well. The game is an action adventure. It was inspired by the classic arcade game Ghouls and Ghosts. My name's Jason Wilson and I'm the lead artist and co-designer along with Chris Sorrel on Medieval. Throughout the game you're playing a skeletal knight called Sedan Fortescue. He is been risen from the dead by the sorcerer named Zarok and throughout the game you're pursuing the sorcerer to try and uh, stop him from completely taking over this weird medieval landscape called Galomia. The look of the game is, is quite unique. You know, a lot of games are based around map editor constructed landscape, it's kind of fairly rigid block-like look to it. This is something that we don't have in medieval, we have curves and skewed uh, geometry all over the place and buildings at funny angles. The game also has quite a strong sort of RPG theme, the requirement for you to use particular weapons to learn particular strategies, achieving 20 different levels and tackling probably about 50 different characters along the way. And when he was alive he was the champion of the, the king of the land and died valiantly in battle. He's quite a goofy looking character I suppose. The aim with him was to give him a, a kind of goofy quirky sort of a look but at the same time for him to also appear to be the valiant and brave character that he actually is. A lot of people said to us, why do we want to have a skeleton as the main hero instead of some sort of huge muscle guy with a big gun or Lara Croft or whatever. So, but we thought it was kind of like silly and different and we both liked the film Nightmare Before Christmas and other sort of silly sort of horror type stuff. So we set out to do um, a skeleton and lots of so you think the skeleton would fight. He's got quite a lot of attack moves and in these I think he looks quite powerful in that but at the same time he's got huge floppy feet which make him look a bit sort of clumsy as he runs around. That we're not trying to do a character that's Conan the Barbarian or something. He's he is a bit alternative. He's a sort of an accidental hero really. But I think it's more for people who are grown up who still think they're kids. <laughs> If you had fun playing Tomb Raider, you're not alone. Six million copies of Tomb Raider 1 and 2 have been sold worldwide. We've come to the place that brought Laura Croft to life, Core Design in Derby, England. We're taking you inside to find out how it happened and what's next. It was conceptualized five years ago now. And one of the guys said we want to do a game based on raiding some tombs and kind of going underground and into the world of the pharaohs and that was something I was always really keen to do. He said, yeah, yeah, let's do it. Let's draw some things up, do a style guide, let's see what the character's going to look like. And of course he came back and it was a male character. For two months, Lara was, was male. And then we went down and saw it on screen and, and Lara transformed into a female. Tomb Raider 1 and 2 became worldwide hits and the console version of Tomb Raider 2 was exclusive to the PlayStation. So what's next? There will be a movie. The movie's live action. It's with a big uh, movie studio. The great thing is that we get uh, total say and veto over the script and the content and the storyline, which is fantastic. Hey, hey. 
Uh, Lara herself will have another game out for Christmas 98. There has been some muted discussion about maybe a, a sidekick for Lara. Maybe a girl, maybe a boy. With, maybe with the, there is some discussion, but I'd hate to blow it before uh, it's finalised. It'd be good though, wouldn't it? I think it'd be pretty neat. What will be in Tomb Raider 3? Core is giving PlayStation Underground subscribers a first look at some footage. One of the main differences is we're going to give Lara a lot more moves, new vehicles. We've uh, overhauled the 3D engine to make everything faster and in high res. This level is going to be based around London, where you'll start off on the rooftops and then you have to venture down into the sewers and the disused uh, tube train lines that are being closed off. Your ultimate aim of this adventure is to break into a corporate building and steal back an artifact that has been taken from uh, a museum. Laura's been hired to go and find it. We're drawing quite a lot more than what um, Tomb Raider 2 could. So we can get big expanses of open area, build quite detailed backgrounds. This is uh, Darren. He's going to be doing uh, the main animations for Lara on Tomb Raider 3. At the moment, he's working on various new moves for Lara, like crawls. We've, uh, we're trying to give her a, a knife so she can actually stab things. <laughs> She's going to use the knife to try and prize certain secret items out from the rock. As you can see, she, she grabs the dagger out it'll be concealed in her leg. Tomb Raider 3 is being built with some interesting custom tools. Here are two of them. This is the animation editor. It allows us to do all the characters in the game. And here you can see a, a wireframe form. In the first game, she was made up of around about 350 polygons. And then in the second game, we upped her to about 540, just to add more detail, more curves. Actually select and draw small tiles, small textures, and we pick them up and place them on all the polygons to build up Laura's look. A second tool creates game levels. Here we're watching level designer Heather Gibson build a room with a series of mouse clicks. And then if you look along this side of the editor, I've got a selection of textures that I can use on this map. Um, we can then go on to apply the textures to these areas. So it's just a matter of popping textures onto the faces that are displayed within the room editor. We can apply a light to the room, change the ambience of that room, change the range and the strength of the light to get that nice moody atmosphere that we've, we've got on most of the levels. And I can actually have a look at this room now if I go into preview and fly around and see how it looks. And also we can trigger all the baddies within this system. So that means that when we place our dogs or cult members within this particular map, I can say that I wanted that dog to attack Lara at a specific point. So I can select the dog and trigger it so that when Lara crosses this trigger point here, the dog becomes activated. It allows the player to run across the trigger and run back into a different area of the map and have the sense that something different's happening because the baddies are still coming through but they might come through it from a different area. So it always gives you the feeling that they're actually quite clever, that they're working out how to get to you. As we left, team member Peter Barnard revealed one last thing. Did you ever wonder what Laura looked like without her clothes on? I bet you wish you hadn't bothered.